Hey everyone, today I want to tell you about the story of how I was rejected to every single PhD program that I applied to, and how despite this, I was still able to fulfill my dream of becoming a mathematics professor. So stay tuned to find out tips on what I could have done differently, and how I actually changed things up later, after I was rejected. Hey, welcome to today's video, I'm Prof Omar. This channel is dedicated to undergraduate theorems and problems for your journey through the undergraduate and to prepare you for the journey beyond. And today I want to talk particularly about applying to graduate programs in mathematics. Yes, it is definitely true that I applied to nine programs for math PhDs and was rejected to every single one of them. At that time, I actually decided to also apply to the master's program at the school that I went to for undergrad. And I was accepted into that program. And I remember that year feeling quite jaded about my actual potential to become a math professor. It's something that I wanted throughout the time that I was an undergrad, and a lot of the friends that I had who were interested in the same pursuit all were going to different PhD programs across the United States. So I often try to reflect right now, especially being a professor who works with undergrads, about some things that I could have done a little bit differently in order to be able to have been accepted to those programs that first year that I applied. So here are just a few tips of things that might work for you that I learned that I think I should have done much better when I was an undergrad. So I think one thing that I didn't do so great with was connecting with professors on a more personal level than just seeing them in classes. I was not a type of student who went to office hours whatsoever. The thing is we often think about office hours as an opportunity to visit a professor for questions on a homework or questions about where we're stuck. For me, I never even thought of the possibility of office hours as being a way to connect to find out more about the material that we're learning and find out more about where that material is actually taking us in the curriculum. Moreover, the office hours could have been a great learning opportunity about possible research experiences with the given professor, and also to learn more about the entire path toward the Mathematics Professoriate. Building these relationships over time matter, especially when it's time to ask for recommendation letters. If a professor knows you mostly because you've performed well in a class, it's hard to really talk about your potential to be doing mathematical research at the PhD level. So going to office hours is definitely a suggestion that I would have given myself as an undergraduate. One other mistake that I think that I made was I was really a gung-ho student who wanted to learn a lot of mathematics, so I decided to take a lot of math graduate level courses while I was an, an undergraduate. However, if you're deciding to take such courses, it's a good idea to go in with an attitude of wanting to actually do really well in those courses despite their difficulty level. And for me, I was overloading, taking too many courses at the same time, on top of some of them being graduate level courses. This actually became quite a bit of a problem, especially one semester in the fourth year of undergraduate, when my dad happened to be going through a potentially terminal cancer. At that time, I would be going to visit him at the hospital once or twice a week, and all of my work really fell through the cracks. But I decided to stick with it anyway, having about three or four graduate level math courses, as well as another course on top of my schedule. This would have been a better time to really release myself from that type of engagement and focus on just a few courses that I knew that I could do well while I was really focusing my energy on the life situation that was at hand. And one other suggestion that I give, especially for students who are applying to more pure math oriented programs in the United States, is to take the GRE math subject test seriously. So the first time I took the test, I didn't study for it much whatsoever. And that was reflected on how well that I ended up doing on the exam. Not so well. And one of the PhD programs I applied to actually responded saying that they were enthusiastic about my application but that one of the barriers to entry was actually my GRE math subject test score. And believe it or not, that's part of why I started this channel in the first place, 
to really give students an opportunity to learn tips and tricks that are not really often taught for the GRE math subject test. So the students have an impetus to take the exam a little more seriously than what's usually spoken about. So these are just three tips of many, many other tips that I have. There's actually a video on this channel where I talk about the secrets of grad school success and expand much more on this. And I suggest definitely checking that video out for more. But these are just three things that I wanted to mention personally that would have really benefited me at the time and I think might benefit you as well.